Throughout history, certain practices like freak shows were deemed acceptable then but would be considered taboo in today's society. However, we can't deny that these tours featured some of the most unique and the most bizarre people that ever lived. From the lobster boy to a human worm, here are 20 circus freaks that actually existed. Number 20. Lobster Boy Let's start with a young gent named Grady Stiles. However, just like most of the people in this video, his name was forgotten and was replaced by his alias, the Lobster Boy. It's easy to see how Grady got such a nickname. He was born with a condition called ectrodactyly, which made his fingers and toes fuse together, resembling the claws of a lobster. However, this didn't come as a surprise as Grady was the latest in a long line of Stiles family members with a condition. Together with his family, Grady went on tours showcasing their unique condition in circuses for generations. It was a disadvantage for them, being born differently, but they needed to make ends meet somehow. Grady's life on the road began when he was just a child. He traveled with the Carney, short for Carnival, community and quickly became a main attraction. Audiences were fascinated and Grady's act drew crowds from all over. But behind the curtain, his life was far from easy. Grady was known to have a temper, and his personal life was fraught with challenges, including strained family relationships. In time, Grady the Lobster Boy used his very own hands to commit atrocious crimes that changed his family name, which was once only associated with the circus, to sin and death. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. The Bearded Lady As the name suggests, the bearded lady, Annie Jones, stood out because of her facial hair. Born in 1865 in Virginia, Annie's life was anything but ordinary from the start. Strangely, by the age of five, she had a full beard, a result of a condition called hirsutism. As a child, Annie got kidnapped because of her bizarre appearance. After all, a single person with potential as an attraction could give people big money. Although it's morally wrong, many people at the time did what they could to earn money, including kidnapping a young girl. It wasn't until later that she drew the attention of P.T. Barnum, the master showman, who saw potential in young Annie and introduced her to the world of show business. This might sound like taking advantage of a child today, but back then it was different. Annie became one of P.T. Barnum's most popular acts. People from all around the world came to see the young girl with a shockingly long beard. As she grew older, Annie's act evolved. She played musical instruments, sang, and even engaged in debates with the audience, showcasing her intelligence and wit. But the pressure of life in the public eye took its toll. While she found love and married, she also faced heartbreak and personal loss. Unlike many in the so-called freak shows, Annie recognized the indifference between people and the performers. She felt the need to push back against the term freaks and advocated for their rights as performers. Unfortunately, Annie still lived a relatively sad life because of her genetic difference. Number 18. The Camel Girl Ella Harper, known as the Camel Girl, is quite easy to spot among many. After all, unlike most people, she walked on all fours and her feet were twisted. It's because of her strange condition that she became known as the Camel Girl. Ella was born in 1870 in Tennessee, and as a newborn, known as Genu Recurvitum, made her different. It caused her knees to bend backward, removing her chances of walking upright like most people would. From a young age, Ella's unusual gait drew attention. Just like Annie, the bearded lady, she joined a circus at a young age. W.H. Harris's Nickel Plate Circus became her home, where she gained her famous moniker, and although she gained popularity by touring with the circus, Ella knew it wasn't the life she wanted. In the circus, she was receiving about $200 per week salary for her appearance. In today's money, that's around $6,500. That's not really bad considering her circumstances, right? But, well, it probably didn't feel good to be treated as a mere attraction rather than a human being. Ultimately, Ella Harper left the limelight and married a schoolteacher named Robert Savely. After living a life with him, she died at the age of 51 in 1921 and was buried in Spring Hill Cemetery in Nashville, Tennessee. Number 17. Cuckoo the Bird Girl Meet Minnie Woolsley, but many might recognize her by her stage name, Cuckoo the Bird Girl. Now I don't know about you, 
but her appearance in black and white photos is quite unnerving, to say the least. Born in the late 19th century, Minnie had a rare skeletal disorder known as Virchow Seckel syndrome that affected her growth and appearance. With a bald head, bird like feathers, and a small stature, she was a unique figure, to say the least. Minnie's journey into the world of entertainment began when she was discovered by a showman who saw potential in her distinct look. To sell her story further, there were rumors that she was rescued from a mental asylum in Georgia. She soon joined the circus circuit, adopting the name Cuckoo the Bird Girl. Her act was simple. She danced, moved to the music, and interacted with the audience. People were curious, and she quickly became a notable figure in the sideshow community. Her most notable appearance was in the 1932 film Freaks, where she joined a cast of other unique individuals. The film, while controversial at the time, has since become a cult classic, giving viewers a glimpse into the lives of those who were different. The end of her life is unknown to us to this day. There's no information on when and how she died. Number 16. Wang, the Human Unicorn If Wang lived in today's era, he would definitely be a head-turner. After all, it's impossible to miss the 13-inch horn at the back of his head. This unique feature quickly garnered attention, starting when a Russian banker spotted him in 1930. The man took a photo of him and sent it to Robert Ripley, the show's creator, Ripley's Believe It or Not. At the time, Ripley was trying to get Wang featured in a show known as Auditorium, but the man refused. However, his fame still soon passed Chinese borders. Despite the fame and attention, little is known about Wang's personal life. Did he have a family? What was his early life like? To this day, there's little to no information about this man. Number 15. Chang and Eng Meet Chang and Eng Bunker, the original Siamese twins. Born in 1811 in Thailand, these brothers were joined at the chest. Their unique appearance caught the attention of a British merchant and an American sea captain who brought them to the U.S. for exhibition. As they traveled, their story spread, making them household names. In the 1830s, they decided to make North Carolina their home following their successful tours. The two became farmers, bought enslaved people, and adopted the last name Bunker. Now that I think about it, the term farmers might not be accurate. After all, the twins bought a staggering 650 acres of land in Surrey County and invested thousands of dollars in property. Overall, their wealth would have amounted to over $2 million in today's money. The twins also married sisters Sarah and Adelaide Yates, and between the two families, they had 21 children. Yep, you heard that right, 21 children. Now you're probably wondering how that worked. Well, the twins had an agreement. Chang and Eng's families lived in separate houses, so the twins decided to stay at each other's homes every three days. Unfortunately, by 1874, Chang's health deteriorated rapidly, leading to his passing. Eng tragically followed just hours later. Both the twins died at the age of 62. While that's relatively young, it was still longer than most people lived at the time. Number 14. Schlitzie the Pinhead it's hard to forget the appearance of Schlitzie the Pinhead once you see him. Born on September 10, 1901, he was originally named Simon Metz and legally adopted the name Schlitzie Surtees. His bizarre appearance was caused by a condition known as microcephaly, which caused him to have a smaller brain and skull. This condition gave him a stature of just four feet and limited his cognitive abilities to that of a young child. In fact, as an adult, Schlitzie only had the mental aptitude of a three- or a four-year-old. However, his condition led him to sideshows. Throughout his career, Schlitzie was often presented as a pinhead or missing link in sideshows. He was sometimes dressed in a muumuu, making him stand out amongst others. This attire, combined with his unique features, made him a sought-after attraction in various shows, including the renowned Barnum & Bailey. Schlitzie's most notable film appearance was in the 1932 movie Freaks, which further cemented his place in popular culture. Because of his condition, a chimp trainer named George Surtees volunteered to care for him. Despite the difficulties, the man claimed that he loved Schlitzie like his very own son. However, after Surtees died in 1965, his biological daughter decided she wanted nothing to do with Schlitzie and put him under the care of a mental institution. Despite his mental aptitude, Schlitzie understood that the mental facility he was in was sad and cold. He knew no one, 
Unlike in the sideshow, where people talked with him and laughed alongside him, he remained there for three long years until another performer named Bill Unks saw him and decided to take him in. Unks appointed himself as Schlitzi's caregiver while touring. Despite Schlitzi's fame, the man never had a home or fortune. In fact, when he died, he had no money to afford a proper gravestone. It wasn't until 2007 that a fan raised money to have a black stone marker placed on his final resting place in Los Angeles. What a sad life indeed. Number 13. Lionel the Lion-Faced Man Born as Stefan Bibrowski, Lionel was a man who struggled because of his bizarre condition. Because of hypertrichosis, Lionel's face and body were covered with hair, making him look like a lion. The story goes that his mother believed his condition resulted from witnessing his father being mauled by a lion while she was pregnant. It's unknown whether this backstory is real or just another scheme created for Lionel's fame to skyrocket. In his early years, Lionel was discovered by a German showman who saw potential in the young boy's distinct appearance. This marked the beginning of Lionel's journey into the world of entertainment. He traveled across Europe, showcasing his lion-like features. As the years went by, Lionel made his way to the United States, where he joined the renowned Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus. Here, his fame grew even more. By the late 1920s, he decided to retire from his sideshow career and move back to Germany. The last report about him claims that the man died in 1932 at the age of 41. Number 12. General Tom Thumb Among the names that were known throughout Europe and America in the 19th century was General Tom Thumb. Born Charles Sherwood Stratton in 1838 in Bridgeport, Connecticut, he was a unique person who, by the age of five, had only grown an inch since he was six months old. He was among the many who joined P.T. Barnum's show. The master showman taught him to sing, dance, mime, and impersonate famous figures. Tom Thumb joined him in shows across America and Europe, and his fame skyrocketed. In fact, he even performed before Queen Victoria and even met the young Prince of Wales, the future King Edward VII. People swarmed around him everywhere he went, but he knew that many of them didn't see him as a normal human being. He was merely a novelty and an attraction. Later in life, he married Lavinia Warren, also a little person. Their grand wedding took place at Grace Episcopal Church, and the reception was held at New York City's Metropolitan Hotel. It was among the biggest events of the year, with the couple greeting about 10,000 guests. In fact, following their wedding, the couple was received by President Lincoln at the White House. Unfortunately, after a fire incident, Charles died unexpectedly of a stroke, and over 20,000 people attended the funeral. His wife followed more than 35 years later and was interred alongside Tom Thumb. Number 11. Isaac Sprague, The Living Skeleton Isaac W. Sprague, often referred to as the Living Skeleton, was a figure that captured the attention of many during his time. Born on May 21, 1841 in East Bridgewater, Massachusetts, Isaac led a relatively normal childhood. However, it all changed for him at the age of 12. Isaac began to lose weight rapidly after an illness he contracted from swimming. This weight loss persisted throughout his life, even though he had a healthy appetite. Historians believe he suffered from a condition known as progressive muscular atrophy. Isaac tried his hand at various jobs during his early adulthood, including working as a cobbler for his father and as a grocer. However, his deteriorating health made it challenging for him to sustain any regular job. In 1866, he joined P.T. Barnum, where he was paid $80 weekly. Despite his attempts to distance himself from the sideshow world, financial pressures possibly exacerbated by rumored gambling issues, kept pulling him back. His health continued to decline, and by the age of 44, he stood at 5 feet 6 inches but weighed a mere 43 pounds. In fact, just to maintain his energy, he often carried milk in a flask, sipping it periodically. Later in life, he agreed that in exchange for $1,000, he would be willing to let his body be cut open for a post-mortem examination. Eventually, he died of asphyxiation while still suffering from poverty on January 5, 1887. Number 10. Bill Dirks Bill Dirks, often referred to as the man with three eyes, was a unique figure in circus sideshows. Born on April 13, 1913 in Jasper, Alabama, 
Bill had a condition known as frontonasal dysplasia, which resulted in a prominent cleft down his face, resembling two faces. He possessed two actual eyes, one of which was blind, a split nose with one nostril on each side of the cleft, and a severe cleft palate. His unique appearance made him a distinctive figure, capturing the fascination of those who encountered him. Though in reality, the third eye was a skin tag located between his two actual eyes, which he painted to look like an additional third eye. Looking at Bill makes you think he's something from a fantasy story. Born to ordinary parents, Bill ventured into the freak show industry around the age of 40. Despite the hardships in his life, he found love before he died in the form of another performer, Mildred, the alligator-skinned woman. Together, they captivated audiences with their unique acts. Number 9. The Elephant Man Joseph Merrick, often mistakenly referred to as John Merrick, is among the people who intrigued many because of his bizarre condition. Born on August 5, 1862 in Leicester, England, he began showing physical deformities before he reached the age of five. Aside from his condition, he also lived a hard life. His mother passed away when he was 11, and his relationship with his father and stepmother became strained, leading him to seek refuge with his uncle, Charles Merrick. By the age of 17, Joseph found himself in the Leicester Union Workhouse, a place for the destitute and downtrodden. Without a family, he was forced to tour as a showman and was given the alias of Elephant Man, which later on became his only identity. During one of his numerous tours, a surgeon named Sir Frederick Trevis became intrigued by him and chose to examine and study his condition. A presentation was done about Merrick's condition, but he wasn't cured. However, the exposure did allow him to get help from the London hospital, but despite this, his health continually deteriorated until April 11, 1890, when he died. Number 8. The Penguin Girl This is Mignon, often known as the Penguin Girl, and she was a remarkable figure in the world of sideshow attractions. She was born with Focamelia, a rare congenital disorder that caused her arms to look noticeably short, resembling a penguin's. This condition also made her waddle rather than walk, resembling the animal's movement. Little is known about her life. She was born in the early 1900s, and her given name is unknown to this day. Even her later life remained shrouded in mystery. Number 7. The Texas Giant In the early 1900s, a figure stood tall, quite literally, in films and sideshows. This was Jacob Rubin Ehrlich, but the world knew him better as Jack Earl, the Texas Giant. Born in Denver, Colorado in 1906 to Polish-Jewish immigrants, Jack's life was anything but ordinary. As a child, he was small for his age, but by the age of 10, he towered over six feet. Living in El Paso, Texas, the locals gave him the nickname Pecos Bill. Because of his height, Jack's life wasn't easy. He often walked the alleys to avoid people, fearing he might intimidate or frighten them. But destiny had other plans. At the age of 13, during a trip to Los Angeles, Jack's towering presence caught the attention of Century Comedies, a motion picture production company. Embracing the screen name Jack Earl, he delved into the silent film industry, gracing many movies with his unique stature. However, life threw a curveball at Jack. A tragic accident on a film set led to a fall from a collapsed scaffolding, severely injuring him. Hospitalized, Jack's eyesight began to blur, and he soon lost his vision entirely. A pituitary tumor was discovered, pressing on his optic nerve. After months of X-ray treatments, his eyesight miraculously returned, though it's believed these treatments might have halted his growth. Jack's journey then took a turn towards the circus world. Ringling Brothers Circus, recognizing the allure of his towering presence, offered him a contract. For 14 years, Jack traveled with them, meeting other giants of his time. But eventually, the allure of the circus faded for Jack, and he sought a quieter life. Returning to California, he laid to rest his Pecos Bill persona. In his later years, Jack became a salesman for the Roma Wine Company, even earning the title of the world's tallest traveling salesman. Jack passed away in El Paso, Texas in 1952, but his story is still remembered by many to this day. Number 6. The Living Half Lady Born in the early 20th century, Gabrielle, later known as Mademoiselle Gabrielle, became known as the Living Half Lady because of a condition that led her to be born without the lower half of her body. She utilized her unique condition to participate in shows and exhibitions. 
Many performers came to know her as a warm, candid, and loving person. She formed deep bonds with her fellow performers. She also had a healthy belief that just because she didn't have a lower half, her identity as a woman was not reduced. Many described her as beautiful, charming, graceful, and demure. In fact, she attracted men and married at least three times during her lifetime. Unfortunately, the later parts of her life and how she died are unknown. Number 5. The Strangest Couple in the World Al Tamani was born as Aurelio Tamani in 1912. He was once known as the world's tallest person, with a staggering height of 8 feet 5 and a half inches. In fact, by the age of 12, he already surpassed his father's height of 6 foot 3. Because of this, he toured in sideshows, and it was in one of those performances that he met his future wife, Jeannie Smith. It was like looking at two extremes. Al was incredibly tall, but Jeannie was born without legs. Despite their physical differences, the two saw past societal norms and prejudices. Together, they became among the strangest couples in the world. After eloping from the circus, the couple settled in the circus community of Gibsonton, Florida. Al became an active member of the community, running various businesses, including the Giants Camp Lodge, a television repair shop, and an RV park. Number 4. The Man with the Rubber Face Born in the early 20th century, Clarence Alexander became known as the Man with the Rubber Face. Later on, he was also known as Elastic Skin Joe. Because of his condition, known as Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, he was able to stretch his skin as much as 18 inches from his body without feeling any pain. In fact, it was said that he could easily pull the skin of his neck over his head. In fact, he had a huge tongue that he also used to lick his forehead. Unfortunately, he lived quite a tragic life, and in the end, he didn't win the attention of the woman whom he held affection for. Number 3. The Mule-Faced Woman Grace McDaniels, often referred to as the Mule-Faced Woman, was born on March 14, 1888, near the small town of Numa, Iowa. Her distinct appearance was attributed to a condition known as Sturge Weber Syndrome. Grace's entry into the world of sideshows began when she won the title of The Ugliest Woman in a contest in 1935. This event led her to join Harry Lewingston's traveling circus, where she earned a substantial wage of $175 per week. Although that's not a bad wage, I think it was still such a painful title to be associated with. However, Grace still found love, albeit only for a short while. She was briefly married in the 1930s and had two children, Elmer and Stella. Despite the public's perception of her, Grace was a devoted mother, often described as going to great lengths to ensure her children's happiness. Her children, later recognizing her dedication, later became her business managers and remained by her side throughout her career. In 1958, while on tour, Grace McDaniels passed away in Chicago, Illinois from natural causes. She was laid to rest in Gibsonton, Florida. Number 2. The Human Caterpillar Prince Randian was often referred to as the human worm or the living torso. He was born in 1871 without arms or legs. Randian's unique physique resulted from a rare congenital disorder. Just seeing him wrapped in cloth resembling a human worm immediately conveys why he was one of the most extraordinary and famous performers in history. From a young age, Randian learned to navigate the world using his mouth and the muscles of his torso. He could shave, write, and even roll cigarettes using just his lips and tongue, a skill that often left audiences in awe. His ability to perform everyday tasks without the use of limbs became one of his most iconic acts. In the late 19th century, Randian was discovered by P.T. Barnum. Through Barnum's show, Randian toured around the United States for over 45 years. He became known by many throughout the years. However, offstage, Randian led a relatively private life. He was fluent in multiple languages, including English and Hindi. He married and had five children, and the family lived in New Jersey. Those who knew him personally often spoke of his sharp wit, intelligence, and warm nature. In 1934, shortly after a performance, Prince Randian passed away, leaving behind the monikers he was tied with. Number 1. The Four-Legged Lady Myrtle Corbin, known to many as the Four-Legged Girl from Texas, was born on May 12, 1868 in Lincoln County, Tennessee. 
Her unique physical condition known as Dipicus meant that she had two separate pelvises side by side from the waist down, leading people to believe that another person was concealed beneath her skirt. However, her condition simply made her body axis split. For this reason, she had a pair of smaller inner legs with another pair of bigger outer legs. While she could move these inner legs, they weren't strong enough to support her in walking. Myrtle was born to William H. Corbin and Nancy Corbin. Interestingly, both parents had auburn hair, blue eyes, and a fair complexion. They looked so alike that it was often pointed out that they weren't blood-related. The Corbin family had four children, including one from Nancy's previous marriage. Myrtle's birth was ordinary, with no complications during labor or delivery. At the young age of 13, she finally entered the sideshow circuit with her famous moniker, the four-legged girl from Texas. Although medical practitioners at the time tried to learn more about her condition, not much yielded from research at the time. Later on, Myrtle married at the age of 19 to a man named James Clinton Bicknell. Although her pregnancy had a lot of complications, Myrtle went on to have four daughters and a son. The family lived an everyday life, but when one of Myrtle's doctors wrote about her, the medical field's attention was returned to her. On May 6, 1928, Myrtle died at the age of 59. Because of her fame, many medical practitioners and even private collectors tried to offer money and financial compensation in exchange for her corpse. However, her family refused the offers, and to stop possible grave robbers, they stayed around Myrtle's grave until the concrete poured over her casket cured and solidified. To this day, many continue to be captivated by Myrtle's story. These are some pretty amazing people, don't you think? And while most of them were mislabeled as freaks and were treated like living attractions, luckily, we live in better times today. If we missed anyone, feel free to share them in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.